Welcome to Let's Talk World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today we have Ms. Sanjukta Dey with us. Sanjukta is an experienced and result-driven lawyer with eight years of experience in civil and corporate matters. She has an honors degree in history from, in, uh, from the eminent presidency college from Kolkata and thereafter a degree in law from KC Law College under Mumbai University. She is trained under the former judge of Honorable Bombay High Court and a renowned senior lawyer, Mr. Girish Gorkole. Apart from litigation, if we talk about Sanjukta, she has considerable expertise and experience in uh, advising various uh, national and multinational companies, uh, government agencies, and developers. In addition to the uh, cases uh, relating to white collar crimes and other general law practices, Sanjukta is also a supporter for providing uh, pro bono legal assistance to those in dire need. So she has a way of giving back to the industry. And uh, not only this, but, but uh, she has kind of uh, worked for the rights of animals, poor uh, slum dwellers and women affected by various sorts of violence and harassment. Of course, I can go on and on with eight years, eight years of experience. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, I don't want to do injustice to her, to her introduction uh, after you know all what she has achieved so far. She has also been uh, one of our awardees, uh, the Lex Carlson Global Awards Dubai 2022. So without any further ado, let me just introduce you to Ms. Sanjukta Dey. Hey Sanjukta, how are you? Hi. Hi, Bharti. I'm all good. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking. So Sanjukta, uh, long time, of course, uh, a lot of achievements uh, and a lot of feathers to your cap already. Uh, we are here to know more about uh, you and, uh, but I just want to start with a very interesting question here. Uh, if you can throw light on a very complex issue that you have handled or you have worked on, and if you can describe the complex, uh, you know, complexity of the matter and how did you approach it basically? Okay, uh, see, to be honest, our profession itself is very complex. All are aware of it. The task of the judges to us and to those who are working in the departments of all the courts, entire complex system. But to my personal experience, one of the most complex thing that I have handled, uh, one of the recent ones I would like to uh, share was uh, there was an arbitration proceedings that uh, we intended to challenge in the high court, but that was uh, not under section nine or uh, 11 or 34 or 37, but we intended to challenge that in the high court under 226 and 227 of the constitution of India. So see arbitral proceedings uh, are under 227 and 226 and 227 uh, is actually barred. You cannot go into high court uh, under 226 and 227. So what, despite that, we still wanted to go. Now, the major reason was that, that there were certain illegalities committed on the part of the, you know, the uh, arbitral uh, tribunal or the arbitration officer, uh, as you may call it. So in respect of that, we wanted to go. We had faced really big hindrances, uh, you know, uh, at our face, the department refused to, you know, take up the matter. And then uh, obviously, since there, there was a complete bar. So in case of any arbitral award, you people have to go to, in order to challenge that award, that is section 34 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act is uh, applicable. In order to challenge that as well, in the, uh, challenge that uh, uh, award and further the uh, order, 37 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, for that you have to go in appeal. Now, one thing in all of this, you know, so my entire team got into it. How can we approach the, uh, you know, the Honorable High Court under 226 and 227? So there was this one Supreme Court judgment that really helped us, which said that only in the rarest of the rarest possibility that, uh, you know, we can go into 226 and 227. But however, such certain, such and certain cases have to fall under the rarest, uh, you know, category. So under that, yeah, we did go. And uh, we somewhat got released, and the rest of the matters are still pending. So yeah, 
to me and to the most recent one if i could say the entire process maybe the matter was uh, short for that but the entire process that it, uh, revolved around it was absolutely complex my entire team had to leave all other their works and a uh, team of around say seven or eight uh, you know uh, all the juniors and the associates and everything they got into it and for this one particular matter they had to you know just leave all their matters and come into it so yeah that was a bit of complex thing but yeah it's not that we didn't did not get into uh, get any release or something like that we did get but then again it was limited but yeah the sense of achievement after uh, the matter was ecstatic so this was one of the com the recent ones others are like the, the former mergers and acquisitions and these are those are all complexes that we really have to go through it the recent one is this wow quite complex i mean uh, the, the the way the, the way i understood it of course i mean when you're telling me that the entire team had to leave their work and then get into it like they had to take a deep dive into it of course i absolutely understand thank you so much for answering that question sanjukta um now uh, this is a very i'm i'm sure that people might have asked you this question uh, a lot of times because uh, uh as as an individual as as a person who sees this from a 10000 feet level it's it's kind of again very unbelievable but you're actually into this industry and uh, it would like i'm sure that even you wouldn't have thought of it that courts might might go virtual and you know justice will be uh done online uh, at some point of time of course you know uh, but you've seen pandemics uh, you know pandemic has kind of seen uh, courts are uh, moving towards remote proceedings and and all of that but i just want to know from you uh, is this like sustainable and a possible way to increase the access to justice uh see the remote proceedings or the online uh, court hearing has its own pros and cons so basically in order to determine whether such uh, justice is you know through the virtual hearing and through this screen is actually sustainable or not so one has to weigh the numbers of pros and the cons so and in order to come to that conclusion so let's just come to the pros uh, first pros of such virtual uh, hearings so in the pandemic when everybody was just confined to their own homes uh, you know citizens of the uh, you know citizens were confined to their own homes their movements were restricted and also this caused a serious blow to the you know to the uh, delivery of the justice so without the working of the courts or the say the tribunals it was very delivered to uh, uh, it was very difficult to deliver justice and uh, such quick proceedings at that point of time became uh, very complex in this situation uh, say i would like to say that the online or the uh, court hearings did quite help a lot especially in the initial days yes it was a bit of difficult for all those who did not come from areas where uh, internet connection was working but then for people especially for the litigants they were able to see you know that how their cases were being uh, going on see for many of them it is uh, impossible to travel from far distance like uh, say for example in the mumbai jurisdiction itself people have to travel at least for the nearby ones have to travel from virar vasai which is like around 50 60 kilometers much ahead as well from people also travel from uh, pune kolhapur satara and all so that was becoming a huge and then ultimately they come most of the time they don't reach on time and all and eventually they come they don't feel satisfied with the court proceedings that go on and all but now with the uh, you know with the hearings virtually and all it has become you know cost effective for them and also convenient for them so this is the transparency is also increased and it is also still important to consider that offline this uh, you know this offline proceedings are in a way uh, kind of time consuming also online proceedings for the same has to be restricted because there are uh, hundreds of matters before the honorable judges on a daily basis it is a huge burden for them as well you know to uh, 
finish of the matters and there are to uh, hear the matters and then you pass orders and all it is a huge burden it is a huge task for the honorable judges as, as well see for us for us uh, lawyers you know we tend to argue at least like say uh, two to three matters or three to four or 10 to 15 matters in a day and then we are done with it right and for the litigants it's like okay i we have this one specific matters but think about the honorable judges they have to hear at least a minimum of 60 to 70 matters on a daily basis and also to personally hear them it honestly becomes a huge task so online proceedings in that way have really you know opened up the doors it has become really transparent for the litigants for um, for judges and for the uh, for us as well for our own convenience we sit you know we sit at our own office we sit at homes and we conduct the matters on all for the convenience of the clients uh, as well it is they have easier access over the online proceedings in if i talk about the pros then again in the cons as i previously said that not all uh, you know not all litigants have access to proper internet connection because most of them uh, especially our clients and all who come from remote villages and all you know they do not have access to proper internet and all so for them it is still the you know uh, old way method time they have to travel all the way from their remote villages they change two to three trains you know they've come by uh, uh, buses they come by auto rickshaws and then they then they board the trains and all they board the train somewhere at night and they reach your uh, early in the morning they uh, stay in the station all this time till the courts start then they come to the courts they attend their matters attend the hearings and then the same day itself they board the train and you know go back to, uh, to their respective homes this is a huge task this becomes a, a huge burden you know and why because only because they did not have access to proper internet proceedings and everything so for us also you know uh, the virtual hearings and the virtual meetings and all become very convenient because every time we cannot call our clients to the offices because of the restrictions which were earlier imposed there also uh, so for this virtual hearing so uh, tend to tend to become a boon for us we could have a virtual discussion and then take instructions from the clients and all so yes definitely in respect of the cons it definitely had much more uh, pros but also considering that uh, you know most of the people do not have such kind of access then yes we would in respect of my personal uh, you know submissions i would prefer to be in a hybrid uh, you know solution rather than getting into a fully uh, a remote version or a fully in person version hybrid uh, you know the facility would really facilitate for all those who cannot uh, you know uh, tend not to have all such access so oh, i mean i'm sure that in a way it helps people choose their convenience also but as we were talking about you know a, a lawyer can handle let's say 10 8 to 10 uh, cases in a day but then judges have to listen to 60 to 70 matters and you know of course then they have to take a decision for it and however it goes uh, do you think that is because of all these things maybe the legal system is overburdened with cases and courts are kind of struggling to dispose of the cases uh, quickly and efficiently the answer is absolutely yes you know statistically it is like more than nearly 5 crore like around 4.5 to 5 crore cases pending in the entire country today like till like, and uh, you know there was this uh, particular uh, dialogue in sunny uh, there was a, a film ya tareekh pe tareekh and all <laughs> so 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 yeah yeah you know so you know that <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in some some actually the 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 litigants get so fed up up matters tend to come up when the surprisingly shockingly you can say uh, and uh, in a very sad manner you know it is very sad to say that you know when the litigant is already uh, passed away so they tend to come up after their demise the question is what is the remedy what is the you know outcome of this see it's not that the judges are at fault in any which ways they are absolutely overburdened as i told you it is more than 4 to 5 to uh, 4.5 to uh, you know 5 crore uh, cases pending as on day 
the ratio between the uh, between man to the judges is very less in our country okay and for that again yes uh, people you know these days they don't tend to take up judicial work they don't tend to uh, take up uh, you know such heavy responsibilities I mean there are so many uh, eminent lawyers uh, in our state in the entire country you know who in the event they would have been judges would have been you know really amazing you know arguing before them would be a uh, pleasure uh, for us uh, you know in a recent uh, interview also the our honorable chief justice of india also pointed out that uh, uh, you know the inadequacy of the uh, judges in the indian courts also uh, because of the lack of infrastructure is one of the main reason that uh, you know there are so much of pendency of uh, cases uh, if one judge has to decide on a per day basis say 60 to 70 matters so i'm saying that on a minimum basis imagine all the judges how much are they overburdened the tendency of five cases and all so it's a very it's a very habitual uh, thing especially in our indian mentality i would say because uh, till date although there are uh, alternate uh, you know dispute resolution uh, systems and all but still litigants you know they tend to file numerous cases as you know in our form in our from uh, our perspective we always suggest the clients we always tell them you know if there are alternate res- uh, you know dispute res- resolution system why not opt for that instead of you know just filing 10 more cases from our personal opinion also we also don't feel like you know arguing such cases because there is nothing you need to fight upon ultimately you come to a solution ultimately you come to some sort of settlement and the matter gets done with but again then filing all these frivolous applications tend to overburden the judges so i hope the people you know in due course of time they uh, you know they tend to, they should tend to uh, and mitigate the uh, you know disputes to or uh, adr instead of filing you know hundreds and thousands of cases and putting more pressure on the honorable judges so yes at present the judges are uh, really overburdened as compared to their uh, sanction strength there are uh, much more vacancies in all the high courts and even the uh, you know lower courts uh, i have recently appeared in uh, hyderabad uh, you know in my matters where one of the uh, lower court uh, you know the one of the one of the honorable judge had the assignment of five courts because the, yes exactly five courts because one judge is looking after the assignment of five point it was highly surprising that and you know i couldn't help but ask uh, the honorable uh, you know judge that uh, my lady uh, how is my lady you know <laughs> trying to or just trying to at least settle all this and look into the matter she, she's like i do not have any other option because there are you know there are vacancies which is not been filled out till that so you know again it should be on the litigants to understand that in order to mitigate their uh, disputes or not they should definitely go for alternate uh, resolutions instead of filing hundreds of litigations also it is on the government to to recruit uh, you know to i'm sorry to to appoint i'm sorry to use the word recruit to appoint uh, judges and to fill out that vacancies which is a much needed situation right now very well explained uh, thank you so much for answering that question sanjukta uh, as we are already talking about like you know in- interrelated things they are all interconnected of course uh, uh, one more question uh, uh, before uh, we uh, you know uh, get to the final segment of the interview how would you rate the current legal system strive uh, towards encouraging the access to justice and do you think there is a tangible movement in uh, closing the justice gap yes again uh, as i said and obviously it is interrelated you know to close this uh, justice gap see firstly uh, i would like to stress on the infrastructure of the courts which is absolutely uh, you know important to look at 
uh, it is a very sad thing, you know. At least the high courts are at a much more better, uh, you know, pace at a much more better. To be very honest, and talking from a layman's perspective, not from a lawyer's perspective, it is a much more better pace to look at. You know, the high courts have ACs and all. I have attended matters in the lower courts and in some of the tribunals where the honourable judges, they are sitting under just one fan, you know, and that is a very sad thing. You know, the courts uh, forget about the parking. They don't have chairs to sit for the litigants. They have such, uh, you know, the infrastructure is so poor. And I'm not talking about only in, uh, you know, in Maharashtra or in Bengal or in Delhi. I'm talking about everywhere in the country. You go, especially you go to the lower courts, you know, you don't have places to sit for the litigants, you know. You only have, there are like two, three chairs, uh, sorry, two, three, uh, you know, straight lines of chairs lined up for the advocates and that's it. What about the old litigants who come and they don't have any places to sit in all? It is very uh, surprising and the honorable judges they are sitting since morning till late evening hearing matters passing judgments imagine that in the at 38 degrees centigrade and 40 degrees centigrade the honorable judges are passing order with, the, with just one fan and imagine the condition if there is a load shooting happening just like seriously imagine the condition their conditions okay and it, honestly i think uh, you know the first and the foremost thing that the government should work upon is the infrastructure that is the basic thing. I mean, you look after the honorable judges, you look after the litigants, you have to, the government is responsible for the entire thing. They have to go for it. Second thing, yes, for the, uh, you know, the appointment, the, for the more appointment of the judges, the we are way below the sanctioned, uh, you know, limit. Of, there are so much of it. I'm talking about the entire country and not for a particular, uh, you know, state. So we are way, uh, you know, below the sanction limit and all. So for that, we have to fill that up. Currently, yes, there is a huge process going on for filling that up and all. But still, the process is where we are way behind that. So yes, then again, there is a delay in access uh, to the justice. So I think in my personal opinion, uh, that if these two, you know, really work out, like the infrastructure, and then uh, the appointment of more, uh, you know, honorable judges, then yes, people will have easier way, easier access to justice. Thank you very much, uh, Sanjukta, for sharing your uh, views on uh, different, uh, you know, uh, topics. And uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, like, we can go on and on, but uh, sadly, we have come uh, to an end of this amazing, enlightening conversation. Uh, but before I let you go, before we sign off, um, what are your opinions or let's say, what are your thoughts on um, uh, on a lawyer's personal life and space? And how, how do you think that your career, I, I'm asking this question because you've spent like eight years in the, in the legal industry now. How do you think that your career uh, affects your personal life and space? Ah, the, you know, it's the most talked about uh, thing that we tend not to talk this publicly, but uh, in our circle, you know what, we always complain that, okay, you know what, my personal life is like, okay, I do not have any kind of personal life. Because to be honest, our personal life kind of is in a way getting really and to a quite, a, a quite an extent, not, uh, you know, hampered. Because... In that way, see, we are into such kind of uh, uh, service where we serve the people. Okay, so for us, uh, tending to those who are in dire need is our first priority. We cannot uh, look at this profession, uh, profession as only nearby, you know, you tend, you tend to spend some few hours and then you take your salary and then you take your money and you then you just go, go away. It is a very noble profession, like doctors, lawyers are also a very, uh, you know, a very noble profession. Yes. So we cannot, uh, you know, limit ourselves to or confine ourselves to certain, to certain particular uh, working hours. Uh, for me personally, me or, uh, you know, the other partners in the firm, even my uh, juniors and forget about the juniors, even my interns, they are working since nine or eight in the morning. They sometimes go home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Yes, that's how efficient my, even my interns are. 
also uh, it doesn't matter if it's a weekend or if it doesn't matter if it's a public holiday uh, if there is an urgent work they're all working so that is how you can say it's kind of like uh, how where where to prioritize thing and then eventually the work life balance just happens uh occasionally we tend to you know uh, give our self certain time for others it may be a you know long vacation or something for us definitely for our in our profession there is no such thing as you know long uh, vacation more or something we are even working on our vacation days so because obviously certain things crops up some kind is in need of some dire uh you know legal uh, opinion or someone gets arrested or some company you know they went suddenly into liquidation or something so there is always an urgency it is on us how we tend to balance it there have been uh, days and nights we are working till 2:30 3 i have uh, worked at 4:30 till 4:30 in the morning and then at 8 o'clock i leave from home to attend matters at 9:30 uh, 10 so yes then again it totally depends on you how you try to balance it but yes for us the priority is you know to uh, come out of this legal complexity to help our uh, clients that is our main priority so in that way you talk about me or you talk about my other partners my associates my juniors or my even my interns and all absolutely dedicated team and i am really proud of them so working non stop for us we don't actually look at the time you know we don't get to eat eat food or something on time sometimes it's breakfast for us at uh, in the lunch time and at night say about talk about dinner we might just eat something at 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock at night so that's how it works but yes in the end it's it feels uh, you know good it feels you are satisfied we are able to give back something to the society that feels good that feels highly enlightened wow thank you uh, thank you so much sanjukta uh, for sharing uh, all of that with us and i mean i've, I've kind of been working uh, uh, with with the legal space for quite some time now so i kind of understand and uh, uh, how hectic is your schedule at the same time there's a lot of studying and everything which is involved like every day so hats off to you of course uh, and uh, i just hope that everything uh, that you have planned for you and for your home just you know it it uh, happens the way you want it you deserve uh, every best thing that is happening right now in the world um we'll have to sign off sadly i'm i'm really uh, but we really need to catch up for another uh, conversation you know let's let's uh, uh, set up a time for some other chat on some other trending topics in the legal space and for our viewers if you like this chat with sanjukta please like and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to click away creators youtube channel to appreciate what we do and you have more coming from industry legal leaders like sanjukta herself Harti Paul Extra signing off take care bye bye